Hello and welcome. This is Kendra with Cards by Kendra, and it is time for a new quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's Card Challenge 14. This challenge is where you can create 15 cards using six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. Now, if you're not familiar with a one sheet wonder, it's a way to cut a sheet of paper efficiently so that you have no scraps, and then you can turn those pattern paper pieces into cards. Of course, you'll need other card stock and supplies, but for this challenge, you can create 15 A2 sized cards and have a chance to win a lot of prizes by sharing your cards throughout the quarter. Now, this challenge runs from April 1st through June 30th of 2024, and there are 25 company prize sponsors this quarter with over $1,000 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout the challenge. Now, I will share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge here in just a bit. To sum up the challenge, you would pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color-coded papers A through F on the printable. These are the cutting templates for 6x6 paper. If you use double-sided paper, that's even better because you will have more options in case you don't like two of the patterns together. You can just use the other side. Now you will cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored cardstock for the layers and some card bases, and then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following the sketches. This challenge is a great way to use up those pattern paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. Now I have some important information to share in this video that you'll want to know about challenge 14. So if you look in the description box, you'll see the different video chapters with the timestamps. So you can skip ahead if you want, but please make sure you listen to the details on how to officially enter to be eligible to win prizes. And I'll be sharing that shortly. The first page of the printable shows the cutting templates for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The mint and orchid colored papers are labeled as A and B. The second page shows the pattern papers C and D, which are green and blue. And the third page shows papers E and F, which are blush pink and turquoise. All of the measurements are listed for each piece, and there are scissors on each cutting guide to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch that that piece goes with. And there's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. For this challenge, you will notice that all of the papers have arrows pointing in different directions, so it's best to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. If you want to use a directional patterns like rainbows or hearts, you may have to rotate the card sketch to have it face the right way. Some of the arrows are at a diagonal, so keep that in mind when picking out your papers. Now here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge. Since everything is color coded, it makes it easy to see what goes where, but everything that is gray, black, or white, you can use white or colored cardstock, or even additional sheets of pattern paper if you'd like. For the sketches that don't have very many pieces of pattern paper, you can always use things like embossed panels, vellum, or stenciled panels to give it more detail. Now card sketch one shows two pattern paper pieces for paper A angled and cut at a diagonal with a three and a half inch wide skinny shape in the center. Sketch two has two triangles from paper A aligned side by side in the upper right hand corner. You can stamp a sentiment in the bottom left corner or use a word die. Sketch three uses pieces from papers A, B, C, and D. You'll trim off pieces from paper B on the top left corner of that dark gray panel and use one of the trimmed off pieces in the bottom right corner. I'll show a quick tutorial of how to put this one together toward the end of this video. Now sketch four has pieces from A, B, C, and D, and you'll want to start with the top triangle piece for paper C, and then align each of the other pieces at a diagonal. Sketch five has a strip from paper F with a large shape for a focal point or sentiment. Sketch six has three strips from paper B, two strips from paper C, and then two strips of solid colored cardstock, or whatever cardstock you'd like to use there. And then sketch seven has a full panel from paper D plus two small strips from paper C that are made to look like one long strip behind that center square that has two strips from paper A along the top and the bottom. Sketch eight has a panel from paper B plus two strips side by side from paper C and D that are cut at an angle. 
Sketch 9 has two half inch strips from papers A and D on the far left and a four inch square where you can build a scene or use a large image plus a banner that you can use from either papers A or D, that's optional, plus another banner piece that can go on the inside of the card. Sketch 10 has three one and a half inch squares or diamonds, two from paper E and one from paper C with a sentiment banner across the middle diamond. Now sketch 11 has a half inch strip from paper A and a two inch strip from paper C outlined by two quarter inch strips on each side with several circles on top. The circle in the back comes from paper F and the others can either be smaller coordinating cardstock circles or embellishments. You can place an image in the two inch circle and a sentiment in the one and a half inch circle. And then sketch 12 has a panel from paper E plus two strips from paper F tucked behind a two and three quarter inch circle, which can be another piece of pattern paper or an embossed stenciled or textured circle with a banner sentiment along the bottom right. This page also has a QR code that you can scan with the camera on a mobile device, and it will take you directly to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group. So if you're not already a member, you can request to join after answering some questions and agreeing to the group rules. But on the Facebook group, that's where you will enter the challenge. Sketch 13 has a rectangle piece from paper E across the top, plus three offset banners cut from paper F tucked behind it and a banner sentiment centered across the rectangle piece. Sketch 14 has a five and a quarter by four inch layer in the back with the square piece with a circle cut out of the center from paper F. You can use the optional triangle and rectangle pieces from paper C to glue behind the opening of the circle if you'd like. It also calls for a half inch banner piece cut from paper C on top of a one inch coordinating cardstock piece. But this sketch is perfect for making a shaker card. Just glue some acetate to the back of the paper F piece and add some foam tape. I'll show you a quick tutorial at the end of this video to show you what I mean. And then for the last sketch number 15, this one has several offset layers. So you'll have a four by five and a quarter inch panel from coordinating cardstock, plus a two by five and a quarter inch strip in another color, plus a large rectangle piece from paper E a two and a quarter inch square from paper F plus a larger sentiment strip on top centered in the square to the right. And you can put any shape or embellishment in the bottom right hand corner of the square. The bottom part of this page includes instructions with some helpful hints, like using larger mats or layers to cut out smaller mats that's gonna be hidden behind the pattern paper. And this is so you can save on supplies. You can also rotate or flip the card sketches to make it work with your theme. You can adjust the size of the sentiments to meet your needs and even add extra details and embellishments if you'd like. And remember, you can always add embossed or stenciled panels or pieces to add some interest. You don't have to follow the sketches exactly. They're just meant to be a starting point to help get your creative juices flowing. If you don't like some of the patterns together, maybe because they clash or the colors don't match well, you don't have to use them. Just swap it out for another pattern or you can even use solid colored cardstock. Remember, this is meant to be fun, not stressful. Just use whatever you think looks good. I don't have a lot of rules, but you do need to make a full set of all 15 cards to enter for the monthly and quarterly prizes. If you have scraps instead of cutting six pieces of paper and you wanna use those scraps instead to make a full set, that is totally fine. The last paragraph on this sheet explains how to enter the challenge to be eligible to win prizes, which I'll go over here in a minute. But the last page has a quick reference guide, which is a chart to show what papers will need to be matched with others for each of the card sketches. This will help when choosing your papers so you'll know what needs to be coordinated. Now this sheet also lists all of the awesome company prize sponsors with links to their websites. If you have the PDF file pulled up on your computer or phone, the links will take you directly to their websites. Some of these are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, this helps to support what I do. If you're not familiar with some of these companies, I hope you'll check them out and see what all they have to offer. For a complete list of prizes you can win for Challenge 14, visit KendrasCardChallenges.com under Sponsors. On the right side of the last page of the printable, it also explains my Patreon membership program and outlines all of the benefits that you can receive if you join as a paid patron. In order to download the free printable, you will need to join as a free member. And in order to do that, you'll just need to enter your email address. That's it. Once you're a member, you will find the post with the link to the PDF file pinned at the top of the Patreon page. 
and then you'll just click that PDF file and it automatically downloads to your downloads folder. If you'd like to receive extra perks and benefits, you can join as a paid member. Patrons help to keep the challenges free each quarter. Now these challenges take a lot of time to create, so joining as a paid patron is a way to help support what I offer the Crafty community. Starting at just $5, you can receive access to a printer-friendly version of the challenge, access to a year's worth of archived previous challenges, and bonus printables. For $10 as an all-access patron, you can receive everything I've already mentioned, plus early access to new challenges, access to all previous card challenges and bonus printables, and a card making kit sampler. And for $25, VIP patrons receive additional benefits on top of what's already been mentioned, and these include a handmade card from me, a monthly card making kit, access to additional video tutorials, and a crafty live stream session each quarter. There are also monthly prize drawings and an exclusive Facebook group for all access and VIP patrons where you can enter to win additional prizes. For more information about my Patreon, you can scan the QR code on the printable or visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges. I'll also have this linked in the description box below. So I hope you'll consider joining as a paid patron. Now while I explain how to enter the challenge for a chance to win some amazing prizes, I'll show you the cards that I have partially put together while I was creating the sketches. I have cut the layers and glued many of the elements down, but I have not decorated these yet. I will share my finished cards in the video that I share on April 2nd that's part of our video design team hop, introducing each of the 15 sketches for Challenge 14, so I hope you'll join us for that. Make sure you're a subscriber to my channel so that you'll get notified. So to enter the challenge, you'll first want to join the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group. Remember, there is a QR code on the printable that you can scan that will take you directly there. But after creating your set of cards, you'll want to upload one photo containing all 15 cards. And you'll upload this to the Kendra's Card Challenge 14 official entry photo album for the month. You will need to include your country of residence in the photo caption since some of the prizes have to be shipped and will only be el eligible to those who live in the USA, but most of the prizes are gift certificates and can be won by anyone worldwide. Please double check to make sure that your country is included after you upload your photo because sometimes Facebook doesn't want to save it. It can be glitchy sometimes. So you can enter once per month up to three times per quarter and it will need to be a different set of cards. For each month. Now if you're not on Facebook you can upload your photo of all 15 cards to the form on my website kendrascardchallenges.com and this is located under the help section. There are also individual sketch photo albums where you can upload single photos of each of your cards. The first five sketch winners will be announced after the first month ends so sketches one through five and then sketches six through ten will be announced after the second month's ends and then sketches 11 through 15 would be announced after the quarter ends. You can enter as many times as you'd like into these individual sketch albums. Then after each month ends, winners for the monthly prizes will be randomly selected from the eligible entries that are posted to that month's photo album and they are announced on my YouTube channel. It's usually a week or so after the month ends and then at the end of the quarter, the quarterly prizes will be drawn from the entries from all three albums. The details for how to enter the challenge can also be found in the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group under the Featured Posts, and these are pinned at the top of the group. I link the current month's photo album in this post, so if you're having trouble finding the albums on Facebook, you can go directly to it from this link, but please make sure that you upload your photo into the album and not into the comment section. I'd now like to introduce the color palette challenge for April of 2024. I created the Challenge 14 printable using these colors. Now these color palettes are by Sarah Renee Clark and she gave us permission for us to use these for the monthly color challenges. Now this is an additional card making challenge separate from the sketch challenge. It's where you can create any project using the colors in the color palette and then post a photo of it in the color challenge album in my Facebook group for a chance to win a prize. It can be a card, a scrapbook page, a journal, really anything that you'd like as long as you use the colors in the palette. And it does not have to be a project using one of the sketches from my quarterly sketch challenge, but it can be if you'd like. 
I'm showing the matching colors for the most popular markers in the crafting industry if you want to make a note or take a screenshot if you'd like to color your images. But I hope you'll play along with us with the color palette challenge. Now back to challenge 14. Let's get into how to cut the papers using these cutting templates. But before I do, I'll show you the coordinating papers that I've selected. I'm using a paper pad from Queen & Company. I chose this paper pad because the colors are similar to the colors in the April color palette. I believe it's been discontinued, but these are the six sheets here that I have assigned to each of the cutting templates A through F, and I'll be using both sides of these papers for my cards. Now before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work, just whatever you want to use to help keep everything organized. But the first thing you'll do is look for the scissors on the cutting template. And this indicates where you will cut first. So I'm going to start with paper A, and it says to make the first cut at five and a half inches. Just look for the scissors on where to start. Now this half inch strip is going to be for card four. Now you need to cut this piece in half, but before you do that, you'll need to cut off the bottom pieces. So you'll need to turn the paper and cut at four and a half inches. Then you'll turn it again and cut this in half at two and three quarter inches. These two pieces should measure the same, but we'll cut these diagonal lines in a moment. And then for this bottom piece, you basically want to cut three half inch strips. You'll take one strip and cut it in half at two and three quarter inches. These will be for card seven. And then you'll take another strip and cut it at four inches. And these will both be for card nine. The shorter piece will need to be cut into a banner, which I usually do when I go to make the card. And the long piece will be for card 11. Now let's go ahead and cut these uh, triangle pieces. So I am going to cut these at the same time. And I have measured one and a half inches from the top left edge over to the right. You can either use a ruler or just measure using your paper trimmer like I'm doing here. But I just marked this at one and a half inches with my pencil in the cut line. And then you'll need to measure down one and a half inches from that top left corner. So I'm putting the top edge of this piece in the cut line and marking it at one and a half inches, mainly because I don't know where my ruler is at the moment. And my pencil lines are really light, so it's kind of hard to see here on camera, but I'm lining up the two dots in my cut line and I cut off that corner triangle first. And then I'm taking the top left corner and lining it up with the bottom right corner and cutting the big triangle. So now I have my three triangle pieces for cards one, two, and three. And off camera, I'm putting all of these pieces into cellophane bags that I numbered for each of the 15 card sketches, just to keep things organized. Now moving on to paper B, this one is pretty straightforward. You'll make your first cut at three and three quarter inches, and then turn the big piece and cut it at five inches to have a panel for card number eight. And the cutoff piece is for card four. Then you'll take the smaller strip and cut it at four inches. The remaining two inch piece, you'll want to cut off a quarter of an inch so that you'll have a square for card three. And you can use that little strip on the inside of the card if you'd like. And then you'll cut this four inch piece into three quarter inch strips for card six. Now for paper C, you'll make your first cut at two inches, then take the small piece and turn it to cut off a half inch strip. This little piece will be cut at an angle when you go to assemble card eight. And the two inch strip is for card 11. Now for this larger piece, you'll want to line up the long edge across the top of your paper trimmer and cut two three quarter inch strips, also for card six. And then with the remaining piece, you'll cut at two inches, turn that piece and cut again at two inches so that you'll have a square for sketch three. And then with what's left, you'll cut off a half inch strip for card 14 that will eventually become a banner. And then turn the remaining piece and cut off another half inch strip, which is an optional piece for card 14 and the one and a half inch square is for card 10. Then with the far right hand piece, cut along the edge at one and three quarter inches and that will be for card four. Then take what's left and cut off a half inch strip, then cut it in half at one and a quarter inches and these are for card seven. Then with the piece that's left, you'll cut at a diagonal from corner to corner. So I'm lining up each corner in my cut line the top triangle is an optional piece for card 14 that you can use behind the open circle and the bottom triangle is for card four. For paper G, your first cut is at four inches. Then you'll turn the large piece and cut off a three quarter inch strip 
and the panel will be for card seven. Take the bottom strip and cut it at two and a quarter inches, and this will be cut at an angle when you go to assemble card eight. The remaining one and three quarter inch strip will be a banner that you can use on the inside of card nine. Now for the two inch strip, you'll cut it two inches to make a square, which will be for card three, and then turn the remaining piece and cut off a half inch strip for card nine. Then turn the remaining one and a half inch piece and cut off a half inch piece from the bottom. And this will be an alternative piece that you can cut into a banner also for sketch nine. For paper E, your first cut will be at one and a half inches. Then you'll turn the strip and cut at one and a half inches twice to get two squares for card 10. And the remaining piece is for card 13. The large piece turn along the long edge and cut at three and a quarter inches. This larger piece is for card 12 and the other is for card 15. And for the last sheet, paper F, this is special because this cutting guide was created by Lynn with LV Handcrafted. It is from her mini one sheet wonder number seven and she gave me permission to use it in the challenge. And what I love about this is that Not Too Shabby Shop created a die using her one sheet wonder. So this is called Easy Wonder Die Number One. I haven't received it yet, but I'm super excited about it because it gives you stitching along the edges of every piece. And it makes it easy to center and cut out that circle in the middle of that square. But if you wanna order it, there will be a link down in the description box to the Not Too Shabby Shop if you wanna check it out. Um, I believe it will be a pre-order. But it is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. And this also helps to support my work. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut this without the die. You'll want to make your first cut at three and three quarter inches. Then take the left hand piece and turn and cut at three and three quarter inches to make a square. We'll do the circle part in a bit. And then for the bottom piece, you cut at two and a quarter inches to make a square for card 15. Then you'll cut two three quarter inch pieces with what's left that will be banners for card 13. Then for the strip from the far right hand side, you'll want to cut off a three quarter inch strip and turn that piece and cut at two and a quarter inches. This will be a banner for card 12 and the larger piece will be a banner for card 13. Then for the one and a half inch strip that's left, you'll cut off a half inch piece from the bottom and this will be for card 12 and the large strip is for card five. Now back to the three and three quarter inch square, you'll want to cut a two and three quarter inch circle from the center. So I'm using a stitched circle die to do this, but you could also use a paper punch if you have one that size. If you don't have either of those things, you can find a round object with the diameter that's close to that size and trace it and cut it out by hand. But when you go to poke your scissors through to cut out the circle by hand, just make sure you put that cut from the scissors closer to the bottom left edge so that the hole will be covered up by the other circle that will be placed on top for card 11. If you look at the sketch, you'll see what I'm talking about. I prefer working with dies, so that's one of the reasons why I'm super excited about the easy wonder die number one to cut out all of these pieces for me. And with the stitching, it'll give more interest to the cards. Once you have all of your papers cut and sorted by sketch number, you'll want to cut the layers according to the measurements on the card sketches using coordinating cardstock. All of the panels and layers on the sketches are either gray, black, or white, and the measurements of each are shown. You can make the card a little more interesting by adding an embossed panel, a stenciled background, or additional pattern paper, or you can just keep it clean and simple. And then next, you'll want to decide how you want to decorate the cards, whether you use stamps, dies, or ephemera. It's up to you. Add ribbon or fun embellishments. Just get creative and add your own personal touch. Now, some of the sketches don't include a place for a sentiment or an image, so you can just best decide where to put it yourself. But maybe you want to leave it off of the front and just add it to the inside. It's really up to you. You just want to make these your own. Now, as I mentioned earlier, here is a brief tutorial on how to put together card number three, since this one is a little tricky, but I did want to quickly mention that there are video tutorials available for each of the cards over on my Patreon. So if you are a VIP member, you'll have access to each of these helpful videos. Card sketch number three. This one has lots of layers, which makes it really pretty. So let's look at the layers here. First, we have our background layer that will fit onto our card base. 
then we have this black layer right here. And I know Kendra's already cut out all the measurements with you for the colored pieces. And so the uh, black layer right here will just fit on there really nice. Okay, it's uh, three and three quarters by five right there. And then we have the gray layer, which is the one that we're going to build on, the dark gray layer. Now, how I suggest you do this is that you have some uh, tape close at hand, low-tack tape, because you've got your paper C here, and you've got this one, which is paper B, which is gonna go up here, and then we're gonna take a piece of that and put it down here. And then you have this paper B, uh, paper D, which you're gonna mat, and we'll put over here. And then we have our two little triangles, which will go up here and down here. So that's the basic idea. And then I have a little piece of uh, black because for my sense of um, balance, I'm gonna add just a little piece right here so that this space is filled in. But you could just put your focal point there, you could put a sentiment there, you could put some bling there, or you can just leave it, it's fine. Okay, so let me get this glued together first really quickly. And like I said, I just wanted a little piece of, um, and actually I have this little piece I think it's come off of. Yeah. I wanted a little piece right here just to keep the continuity of the black showing. So I'm going to put this little piece of black matting on here. And you don't have to do this. This is just me being picky picky. Take this piece, glue this piece to that piece. Then you've got this beautiful piece and it goes right in there. And there you have, you can decorate it up however you want. Of course, you probably have patterned paper on there, but there is this piece right here. I really hope you'll join us on the challenge. If you post your creations on social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or YouTube, you can use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 14 and KCC14 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. By using these hashtags, this allows everyone to search for cards made with the challenge. So if you're looking for more examples or inspiration, searching social media with these hashtags is a great resource. Again, make sure you're a subscriber to my channel and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads or posts. You'll definitely want to check out the giveaway video hop that begins April 2nd, 2024, where each of the Kendra's Card Challenges video team members will be showing the card making process for each of the 15 card sketches in this challenge. For hopping along, you'll have a chance to win a goodie bag with card making supplies valued at 
over $100. I hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for Challenge 14 and have a chance to win. And something new this quarter, a few of us will be doing a live stream video hop on YouTube on April 7th, so I hope you'll check it out. In addition, the inspiration team will be sharing projects on Instagram and other social media to show how these sketches can be used beyond the challenge with projects such as bags, boxes, pop-up cards, gift card holders, and more. They will be posting on a variety of social media platforms throughout the quarter, so I hope you'll click on the link to my creative team member page that's in the description box below. On this page, you will find a list of all of the team members' links. I hope you'll follow them to find additional card making inspiration. Now let's talk about the amazing prizes you can win for Challenge 14. As mentioned before, we have 25 company prize sponsors this quarter with prizes valued at more than $1,000. The sponsors for this challenge are shown here along with the prizes you can win for each one. Some prizes are monthly and some are quarterly, so to have more chances to win, submit a set of cards each month. It will need to be a different set of cards each month. There are also some additional prizes you can win, such as mystery card kit samplers, stamps and dies that I'll be giving away. Sketch winners will receive a handmade card and access to one of my digital downloads. You can see the full list of prizes and what each company has donated on my website at kendrascardchallenges.com. And we have some new company prize sponsors joining in this quarter. The new sponsors this quarter are Copictopia, Hero Arts, Honey Bee Stamps, Love from Lizzie, Sweet and Sassy Stamps, whose name will be changing to Creative Worship, and the Stamps of Life. We're super excited about these new company prize sponsors, and I hope you are too. Not only can you win prizes, but you'll be building up your card stash in the process. We will be having hops each week throughout the quarter where you can have even more chances to win prizes. These hops will showcase creations made with products from some of the Kendra's Card Challenge's super sponsors and the card sketches from this challenge. And we'll have some guest designers joining in as well. All of these hop opportunities are listed on my website under Ways to Win, so you can easily find the playlist and where to start the hops. Remember, you have until June 30th of 2024 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form. If you're watching this video after June 30th, you can download the archived printables through my Patreon page as a patron member or purchase them individually through my Spring Store. These are linked at the bottom of my website homepage at kendrascardchallenges.com. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons shown here. You don't know how much I appreciate your support. This is such an awesome group of crafters and I'm so grateful to have you as part of the Kendra's Card Challenge family. If you think you might give this challenge a try, leave me a comment. If you're new to my channel, let me know how you found this video or heard about the challenge. I'd also love it if you give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who you think might enjoy it. I hope you will join us on challenge number 14. I appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.